Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose. We have a controversy to talk about today as the Nintendo community seems very split on an upcoming exclusive remake for the Switch. Yeah, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl sit amidst yet another controversy. This seems pretty common with the Pokemon community anymore, as opinions seem to be all over the place on what direction this franchise should take, and it's more evident than ever before, and I'll explain as to why here in just a bit. Also, the Xbox series continues to show how capable of a machine it truly is. I think it's quickly becoming one of the most diverse mainstream consoles ever, and by this point, it goes beyond just Xbox. So we're going to talk about that as well, but we do have a lot of other things to talk about. So let's just jump right into things, starting off with a very exciting game that was revealed today, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Now, it's been a while since we got a good Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, but at one point in time, this was a great franchise in gaming. I remember playing the arcade beat-em-up brawler as a kid, Turtles in Time, and to this day, I consider among the best in that genre. It ranks right up there at the top when it comes to beat-em-up style games. My personal favorites are Castle Crashers, Battletoads, Turtles in Time, River City Girls, and then Streets of Rage, or more specifically the newest one, Streets of Rage 4. And that's the cool thing about this new game, Shredder's Revenge. It obviously goes back to being a brawler beat-em-up style game that it's so well remembered for, but it's also being developed by .mu. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but as soon as this trailer went live, that was something that I immediately noticed because they are the studio behind last year's Streets of Rage 4, which was an amazing game. Seriously, if you haven't played that game and you like this genre, go play it. It is absolutely one of the best, and that inspires a lot of confidence for me in the return of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If they can bring back Streets of Rage in 2020, I have full confidence that they will also be able to do a good job on Shredder's Revenge. From what I've seen, I like the art style and it looks like a lot of fun with a nostalgic retro feel to it. I actually do have a lot of fond memories playing the original game as a kid. I grew up watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show and the movies and the game was just so much fun to play. I'm really looking forward to a modern Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game with that retro style to it once again. Next up, let's talk about a new PlayStation game by Naughty Dog. Yeah, they're working on something that could release possibly, hopefully, soonish. Yes, they did just release The Last of Us Part 2 last year, but one thing that game was missing is the multiplayer game mode that was in the original Factions. Factions had quite the fan following too for its unique approach on its competitive multiplayer, and there were several fans more than just a little upset when Naughty Dog did not launch its multiplayer side by side with the single player component. They however are still looking to release something multiplayer related at some point. Last year, they did note that they're fans of Factions themselves and said that they are excited to share more when it's ready. Well, we haven't really heard much about this multiplayer since until a new job listing was spotted online yesterday. Yeah, a job listing went up online for an economy designer. Now, this is probably linked to The Last of Us Part 2's multiplayer, but interestingly enough, the job description sounds a lot like a live service game. They very specifically mention designing, implementing, and tuning the game economy player progression system. It also talks about creating avenues for self-expression for players, ensuring robust longevity, and giving players rewards to strive for. This very much fits in line with games that have things like microtransactions. Really, pretty much most competitive games does this to an extent now, and it does make me wonder if this will be a standalone free-to-play multiplayer game. A lot of live service games have now went to that direction as microtransactions end up paying for the game and being free to play has shown to really boost games in terms of how many people play it. I think that could ultimately be the best direction to take rather than trying to tie it to The Last of Us Part 2. Now they can still update that game for the PS5 and hopefully they do do that, but I think making a standalone multiplayer game could be the right move. Factions was a well received game and being its own game it could be very beneficial. Moving on, we have a couple Nintendo related topics. One game that we have talked about on this channel numerous times within just the last month is the newest sensation, Valheim. This game has been incredibly successful over on Steam since it launched in early access last month. It's already went on to sell 5 million copies and fans are absolutely loving this game. I see you all in the comments though and several of you have asked about a console port. The thing is, the developers themselves to this point are focused on early access, 
and because of that they have no current plans to port Valheim to consoles. It will be an early access for at least one year, though they did say that they will not rule out a console release in the future. So it could end up being a long wait for consoles, but Panic Button, which is very well known for their amazing job with Switch ports, has already become interested enough in this game to say they would love to do a Switch port. So this is a good sign for the Switch community. I'm pretty confident that Valheim will eventually make its way to consoles. It's just an obvious move for a very successful game. You're just missing out on too many customers by not releasing them on consoles at some point. Sure, consoles might have to wait for a while and everything, but I do think it will happen once they exit early access. And the fact that a developer is already interested in doing a Switch port is a great sign for the Nintendo community as well. I mean, this is a game that fans are just absolutely loving over on Steam, and I think that will translate to consoles if it ends up happening. There is a controversy that we need to talk about though, and that's with Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. These remakes have been rumored for a long time, and I think most people kind of assumed that the remakes would look different than what it does. It did seem to surprise a lot of people when they revealed its chibi art style. I personally don't mind it myself, it's very faithful to the original. I think it could use some outlines for just a little bit of extra detail, but other than that, I'm personally not really against this art style per se. I know a lot of fans were expecting it to have the sword and shield art style, and I thought that they would have done that as well, but they instead chose to go with a very nostalgic art style instead. The thing is, the Pokemon community has been really split on this decision, which is very common for the Pokemon community anymore. They've been very loud with the last few Pokemon games, and some really want these games to make a big change. I myself like the classic Pokemon games, so I'm still really excited about this, but for those who want more of a drastic remake, a new fan-made trailer went up online yesterday that really has fans chirping. Now, I'm not going to show that trailer here as I do encourage you to watch the original. I will post some pictures, but if you want to watch the reimagined trailer, I will have that in the description below. What you can see, though, is Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl reimagined in this new fan-made trailer, and it does look a lot more ambitious than the actual remakes. You can see May walk around in a more traditional style, and the towns look much bigger with Pokemon on the screen in the background. For an artist to do a trailer like this in such a short period of time, it does look really good, and based off the reaction, people like what they're seeing with this fan-made trailer. It's brought forth a big discussion though on the direction of Pokemon games, so I'm going to ask you, would you have liked to have seen Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl go in an art direction like this, or do you prefer the chibi art style that they went with? For me, it's personally all about gameplay, so in my opinion, as long as they can keep the classic formula of gameplay intact, then I'm okay with changes to the art style. If they want to make a more ambitious game in terms of art direction like this, just keep the classic formula of gameplay is all I ask. Let me know what you think. Do you like the art style of this new fan-made reimagined game? I personally think it looks really good, but I would like to hear what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. Would you like to see a game like that in the future? Let's talk about Xbox though, as they've had a busy week. And interestingly enough, the Xbox series has become a great device, not just for Xbox games. I know that's an odd thing to say, but it's actually true. It's a good emulation machine where you can emulate older platforms. We talked about that in the past, but yes, you can use your Xbox series to play Retro Arch, which can emulate several retro consoles. It doesn't stop there though, because Xbox is now getting an update to support their latest Edge Chromium browser. Now on the surface, that doesn't sound overly exciting, but actually this will allow you to use different streaming services. Yeah, that's right. You'll be able to use Google Stadia or even GeForce Now, which can stream Steam compatible games or even Epic games. That means technically you will be able to play games like Death Stranding, which is a PlayStation published game on your Xbox. That's pretty cool. And it shows you the wide variety of things that you can do with your Xbox. It's starting to be able to play a lot of games that technically was not made for Xbox itself. Now, as of this moment, it's only available to Xbox insiders, and it is important to keep in mind that you will be streaming these games. It's been a long time since I've used GeForce Now myself. I did buy an Nvidia Shield years ago where I used GeForce Now, and it ran okay. I've heard it's gotten much better since then though, and with AI upscaling, you can make it look really good at lower resolutions. So if you have the internet capable of running it properly, you could technically try it out and see Death Stranding running on your Xbox. I mean, we were talking about Valheim earlier, actually, and I believe that's available on GeForce Now as well. So again, 
technically you can play Valheim on Xbox. As for Stadia, they have some games too. They have Baldur's Gate 3, which is still in early access. I'm still holding off for its full release, but I hear good things about it. Nonetheless, this is a pretty cool update for Xbox. One other quick update for Xbox though, is for Overwatch. Overwatch did receive a new patch that allows the Xbox Series version to run up to 120 frames per second. There's actually three different game modes for you to play in. There's the resolution mode, which will run at 4K at 60 Hz on the Xbox Series X. Series S though will be 1440p. Then you have the balance game mode. Here the Series X will be at 1440p at 60 frames, while the Series S will be at 1080p. And then the big one that I would definitely recommend is 120 Hz. Yes, the Series X will be able to run at 120 frames per second at 1440p resolution. The Series S will also be able to run at 120, but it will instead have 1080p resolution. Now, I am a big fan of Overwatch, and the reason I recommend going to 120 is because frame rate is incredibly important in a competitive game like this. I play on low settings on a PC myself to run a stable 144. Frame rate by far is more important than raw visuals for a game like this. Oddly though, the PS5 version has not received this update yet. I imagine that's because of how backwards compatibility works on a PS5, but hopefully it gets this update later on as well. It'll probably take a little extra work, but we'll see what happens with all that. On to the poll of the day though, there is a rumor floating around that the quote unquote Switch Pro will have exclusive games for it similar to how the new 3DS worked. The new 3DS also had some games that were not available on the original 3DS. It wasn't very many, but this was a thing, so we can't completely rule out the idea that Nintendo would do that once again with a Switch revision. So I asked you, the community, do you like the idea of the Switch Pro getting its own exclusives? And 64% of you said no. Some of you all seem pretty passionate about this topic. Some of you believe that a revision absolutely should not have exclusive titles, whereas others mention making exceptions if it allows more games to come to the Switch. It's always important to keep in mind that this is just a rumor, but as some pointed out, maybe it could allow more third-party games to release on the Switch, as the rumor suggests third parties specifically making exclusives. That's something we would have to see play out. I can't imagine Nintendo would release exclusives themselves. I think that would be a bad decision myself, and really I don't personally like the idea of exclusives for a revision. I think that kind of goes against the idea of it being a simple revision rather than the next generation console. I think some of you all made a really good point with third party exclusives though. I mean, maybe it could get more third party games this way for technical reasons. I mean, maybe it's just not able to run on the standard Switch. So for that reason, I think that some of you all did make a really good point. Anyways though, that's it for this episode. But if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.